what you just said is a fallacy. In the course of disagreement, people often raise accusations about their opponents committing fallacies. You know, they'll say words like, um, you don't care about rationality, or you're not being logical, it's a logical fallacy, something like that. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is a distinction between uh, formal fallacies and informal fallacies that I think is important for improving our understanding about the type of things that can go wrong um, in an argument that someone's presenting, right? Because we don't want to accuse someone of making a fallacy when in fact they're not due to a lack of understanding. So the first class of fallacies, formal fallacies, are to do with the form of inference that's being made in an argument, right? So in ordinary language, there are kind of forms of inference that we might make that might be even a little bit different to the ones that we might make in some formalisms. But what formalisms try to do is provide a, a richer, more rigid way of understanding the nature of inference. So there's, there's different forms of inference. You know, there are different logical languages. You know, so a simple one might be a propositional language. It can get more complicated when we introduce things like quantifiers um, or modality or something like that. Um, and then there are kind of forms of inference which rely on that, you know, rather than things being simply true or false, there are degrees of belief that we can add to things. So these are going to be probabilistic type inferences or statistical type arguments that we can make, right? So we don't need to worry too much about all of these. But the main thing is going to be that within these formalisms, there's going to be well-defined ways of understanding methods of inference that are truth preserving or correct ways of making inferences from premises to conclusions. And there are going to be incorrect ways, right? Ways that just don't formally work. So let's give an example of that. Um, in propositional language, a standard form of argument is um, to provide one premise that's kind of, if P is Q, then Q is true, right? P is true, so Q must be true. And this is a valid form of argument called modus ponens. Now, an invalid version of that argument, and a really common mistake that people make, is sometimes they will argue, if P then Q, right? Q, therefore P. But this is an invalid form of argument. Now, all of the premises and the conclusion, right, they might, they might actually be true all at once. So, so let's kind of add some flesh to the argument, you know. If it's raining, then the floor is wet, right? The floor is wet, therefore it's raining. Now, it could be true that it's raining, and it could be true that um, if it is raining, then the floor is wet, right? And it could be true that the floor is wet. But those two premises that we've given, if it's raining, then the floor is wet, and the floor is wet. They don't mean, they, they, don't, they don't guarantee the truth of the conclusion, right? That the conclusion being that it's raining. And that's because, you know, it could be true that if it's raining, the floor is wet, but the second premise, the floor is wet, is also consistent with it, in fact, not ra raining, but rather someone spilled some water or something like that, right? Um, it's easier to map this out with a, with a truth table. So if you're a little bit confused by that, look up, you know, truth tables for um, material implication or conditionals. But that's the sense of, so that's a fallacy of affirming the consequent, right? And that's a, an, a formal fallacy that someone can commit. Now, there's different types of fallacies, um, informal fallacies. So these don't concern sort of violations of rules in formal systems of inference. But rather, these are kind of more uh, more rough rules of thumb or heuristics for things that might go wrong. So, you know, th these are going to be things like, say, um, ad hominem, so against the character. And there's different senses and ways that you can even construe that, right? So there's a sense in which ad hominem could be um, correct just in case mentioning something about someone's character has implications for the type of reasons and arguments that they're providing. Or there's a sense in which someone could accuse you of ad hominem because, you know, it's their beliefs that you're essentially rebutting or something like that, right? And so there's a sense of, in, in which uh, the, the accusation of ad, hom ad hominem might not necessarily um, mean that the, the argument being given is an incorrect one in favour of some conclusion. However, um, the sense in which it's typically understood that ad, ad hominem is being used is some irrelevant characteristic of, uh, about someone. So maybe, you know, um, it could be, well, you smell of poo, so your argument's wrong, right? Well, that it doesn't matter if I smell of poo, that's got nothing to do with, you know, my beliefs about whether or not God exists, which is what we're talking about, or something like that. Um, you know, there's all sorts of other 
informal uh, fallacies out there. So, you know, th things like ad baculum, ap appeal to kind of violence or something like that, you know, believe it or uh, I'll beat you up kind of thing. Um, or, or appeals to authority or appeals to popularity. Though, again, this is still context dependent because there are clearly some contexts within which, you know, if we're, if we're arguing about something and we appeal to what most people believe, that could be actually a relevant consideration, right? Um, or if we're arguing about something and we appeal to um, the consensus of relevant experts who share a kind of, you know, the best methodology and the best tools and inferences and things, there's a sense in which that can also actually actually be um, a good form of reasoning as well. So these informal fallacies, while they can help us to understand mistakes that someone might be making in their reasoning, um, they're context dependent. We need to pay more attention to the specifics of the context in order to figure out whether or not they actually apply in any particular case. And so I will, I'll make some videos talking about specific uh, informal fallacies and their application and when they're, when they're right and when they're wrong. But the first thing I wanted to do is just highlight this difference between formal and informal validity um, to kind of set the stage for improving our, our, our reasoning when employing these sorts of uh, criticisms of people's arguments. <laughs> 